Welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, this is continuing saga of layouts in Drupal 8. Uh, I'm Tim Plunkett. I work for Acquia. I'm based out of Philadelphia. Uh, welcome to the East Coast. It's my first East Coast DrupalCon, um, and it was really nice to not have to travel at all. Uh, there are, uh, I'm now the co-lead of the layout initiative for Drupal 8. I think I saw my co, uh, Emily in the back is uh, the other lead of the layout initiative. Uh, and there's a, a lot to talk about for the future, but first I want to take a step back uh, into the past, the very distant past of Drupal 7. Uh, first, can I get a show of hands? Who is a site builder or who interacts with the Drupal website? That's everyone. Good. You're in the right place. Um, any people more on the front end side of things and back end? And who would consider yourself like a content editor or on the business side of things? Okay. All right. Well, we'll address all of those today. So to begin, Drupal 7, uh, as most of the modules that we're going to discuss for uh, all these, uh, this talk do more than one thing. I'm uh, mostly going to focus on their ability to sh alter the layout of a page. Uh, start with the obvious, which is the block module. It was in Drupal 1.0. It has always been part of Drupal, and it will always be part of Drupal. Uh, Drupal wouldn't be what it is without the block module. Uh, if you're familiar with the Drupal 7 version, you could uh, place any block once per theme into any region of your choice uh, with conditions that would determine whether or not the block would show up, uh, give it be per content type or for a certain path for a certain role of user. Um, and there was very little flexibility since you could only place it in one region. You couldn't have it on the left sidebar for admins and the right sidebar for anonymous users. That wasn't that's not possible in Drupal 7. And there is a single UI that lists every block on your entire site at once. So if you have a lot of blocks and uh, very con complex configuration with that, it can be hard to understand exactly what's happening by looking at that page. Along came Panels module, the 30th most installed module of all and the most widely used layout module. Uh, panels isn't what you think it is. If you say you know panels module, you may not know exactly what's happening. Uh, most of the time when you think of panels, you're really using page manager, and panels is more just the UI on top of, of page manager. Uh, it's mostly used to create landing pages. And it, it operates within the main content region of a single page. So it ignores the header, the footer, the sidebars, and gives you very uh, complete control over what's in the middle and main part of your, your page. Uh, shortly after the panels module was written, along came a module called context. Has anyone used the context module? Does anyone still use the context module? Uh, many less hands than went up at first. Uh, the context, instead of uh, showing you all the, the blocks and when you have to go in and con uh, look for their conditions, instead it shows you all of the conditions. and says for these set of conditions, these are things that will happen. Um, and it was a really interesting way to flip the paradigm of how you uh, interact with your site. And it was more driven towards uh, use cases and user stories, saying, you know, if, if, as an admin user, uh, when I'm on this page, then these things happen. Um, which is really great when you have a complete <laughs> outline of exactly what's supposed to happen with your site, and then you build it, and then you ship it to the client, and they say, that's great. If they <coughs> don't like what they got, it's very hard to go back later and figure out exactly which condition triggered the right thing and to change it later. And coming back to a site months and months later, or as a new developer working on a site you didn't build yourself, it's very tricky. Um, and there are helper modules that have cropped up since to make it easier. But uh, it's, it's very hard to, to determine exactly what is causing your, your page to look that way. Um, then after the sort of renaissance of landing page layouting tools, uh, people started to become more focused around content. With CCK in Drupal 6, the field module being in Drupal 7 in core, uh, the, there was a module, a set of modules to kind of give more power to that. And that is Display Suite. Uh, Display Suite is one of my favorite modules. Um, but Display Suite also does about 30 different things. Uh, the main part that I'm talking about is the field placement. So in the, within the field UI, you can uh, set up different sub-regions, uh, for example, article nodes, or user profiles and configure exactly what shows up it where uh, for that piece of content as opposed to the entire page. 
Um, and you can use it alongside panels. Some people say, oh, I use display speed. I never use panels. Well, you can use both. Um, you have to be very clear about which part of which module is controlling which part of the page and make sure everyone in your team is, uh, is doing the same thing because you don't want to have them uh, blending together and uh, in, you know, over, overlapping too much because it can get out of hand very quickly. Uh, then after uh, the display suite kind of revolutionized how you, you use the field UI in, in complex situations and people said, well, I'm re really familiar with panels. I like panels. Why can't we have a, a sort of panels version of that? Along comes panelizer module. Uh, it's panels integration for content types. Uh, you can say like all articles have two columns, but events have three columns. And you can do with panelizer specific node per node customizations. You can say you know this one node has this different layout than all of the other ones, which can be very very powerful. Uh, and it also operates within only the main content region. So then everyone said, great, we have landing pages, and we have content. Uh, layouts, but what about the rest? I don't really like using the block module for the header and the footer. Um, so they wrote the Panels Everywhere module. Has anyone successfully installed and configured the Panels Everywhere module? Two people, three people. <laughs> That's why you, you've never heard of it. Because it's very, very complex to set up. You have to start your site with it. It's, really, it's almost impossible to then later use the Panels Everywhere module uh, after building your site because it requires integration at the theme level. Um, it's, it's very powerful but very confusing and, and tricky. And it is therefore the 424th most installed module, which is not. <laughs> so that's sort of an overview of, of Drupal 7 as it was for a long time. Now since Drupal 8 has come out, there are new Drupal 7 solutions, uh, for example paragraphs but paragraphs didn't even begin as a module, even though there's a Drupal 7 version until mostly after uh, Drupal 8 came out. So I'm not gonna get into any more detail on that. Um, so with focusing on Drupal 8, you know, all the maintainers of all of these modules came together and said, well, we're overlapping a lot. Like we all do some really great things. Some things are better than others, um, but there's a lot of uh, shared concepts here and share, there could be shared code. Um, so the, the first foray was a contributed module called Layout Plugin, uh, which is a very exciting name. Um, it actually, it turns out it's like the eighth most installed module right now in Drupal 8, which uh, is a shame because it's now gone. There's now the Layout API in core as of 8.3.0, uh, which was released like three weeks ago. Uh, it provides you the ability to define a, sing a layout. Uh, there's no UI for it. It's uh, defined there in YAML files. Um, and, but now the, this API is used by Panelizer, Page Manager, Panels, Display Suite. They're all using the same exact uh, API. So if you write one layout for Display Suite, it can also be used in Panels. You don't have to define them separately, which is awesome. Uh, I like not having you know, four light ion systems on the same site. And uh, as I said, it's, it's in the newest version of Drupal. And uh, you know, bootstraps and foundation, they're all using Layout API now. So you only have to learn one thing and it'll work for everything. Uh, it was the, unfortunately, it has not yet been integrated with the block module. Uh, <laughs> as I said, Drupal wouldn't be anything without the block module, it's not going anywhere. So the block module still is the same as it ever was, except you can now place a block infinite number of times. So you can have that power to say, uh, for admin users, I want the block in the left sidebar. Anonymous users, I want it in the footer, or uh, you know, different content types. Uh, but it's still relatively very little flexibility. You have a single layout for, for the entire theme. So every page has the same layout. And uh, if you want to use the block module to control your layouts, you have to create a theme with you know, 90 different regions that only some of them are used in certain places to kind of give you that flexibility, which is no flexibility at all. Uh, it's still also one UI. It's a very long list of all of your blocks. Um, and as the regions are defined in your theme in code, uh, just by machine name, no sort of layout of them. Uh, and there's no layout API integration as of right now. Uh, panels and friends, all of the modules uh, were written separately over, over the years, uh, but now they're being worked on together as a unit by the same group of people. And most all of them now have uh, beta releases for Drupal 8.3 or greater with the layout API integration. Uh, they were a straight port of the functionality. No real changes were made. It was 
If you recognize uh, panels in Drupal 7, you'll recognize it in Drupal 8. Uh, the layout, uh, has anyone used Panels IPE, the in-place editor? A few hands, it's, it's really actually pretty great. You can uh, you know, customize the page from the front end and drag and drop your blocks around, or panes as they're called in Drupal 7. Um, and it gives you a lot of power and you can lock that, you can grant that power to content editors if you are very brave, um, or you can restrict that power. Uh, that is also working right now in Drupal 8 as a backbone JS implementation, which is really cool. Uh, that will be iterated on over the, the next couple months or years. Um, but it's, there's no API changes to worry about. You can just continue using it. And it will continue to do more and more and become more powerful, and eventually possibly move into core. Um, the context module, same as it ever was. Um, no real plan, clear plans to integrate with the layouts at all. Um, mostly, I, I believe, just because it builds a upon block module. So it would need to wait for block module to improve in order to do anything. Um, it's still popular. People, you know, they've been using it since Drupal 5, and why change now? So uh, you can keep on keeping on with that if you so choose. The display suite module is the first layouting module to become stable for Drupal 8, and it uses layout API. So you can use it today in production, you know, and uh, there's a point .0 release. But more exciting, and what I'm really here to talk about, is a new core module called Field Layout. Uh, it is an experimental module in Drupal 8.3, and it is layout API integration for the field UI. So we're trying to bring sort of the, the idea behind Display Suite into core. Um, and the next, the roadmap, which I'll talk about in a bit, is to move towards putting basically Panelizer in core, uh, which is awesome. Yay. <laughs> now I want to talk about what, what we could do next, or what we should do next, or what do we want to do next. Uh, there's, the, you know, we, after with, with field layout going in, uh, that was the first big step. And that was the thing, in, in New Orleans one year ago, we all sat down and agreed upon that as the, the, the first foray into layouts in core. And we did everything we agreed on. And now we have to start discussing what to do and agree again, uh, which is why we're having a core conversation about it. Uh, so one possibility of something we could do is a theme layout, integrate layouts into the theme, uh, which would then help block module. And you could either have one layout per theme or some sort of UI to change them. Um, similar to like the theme key module. Uh, there's a huge possibility there, but it's really not as user facing as you would think. Like as someone laying out your, your site, it's a content moderation system uh, and content is key. And defining what the layout is based on at the theme layer doesn't really jive with that idea of, of each piece of content kind of uh, embodying its own space. So this may or may not happen if someone's interested. Uh, that could be your pet project, and it could actually happen in core for 8.4 or 8.5. Another possibility would be a landing page builder. Uh, Emily, my co-initiative lead, has some really interesting designs about uh, a way to build landing pages uh, in a new way that's sort of different, uh, borrowing from some of the paragraphs approach, uh, but incorporating it into a panels-like structure. Uh, and it would allow you to create a land each landing page with its own very flexible layout, uh, which is sort of p possible with Panelizer. You can cheat, you can make a content type called landing page and create nodes of that type and assign each one their own layout. Uh, but landing pages are important and they're not content. They don't necessarily need the same support that that content has in sort of a moderation workflow. So it would be nice to have landing pages be a first class citizen of Drupal and really um, bring it to the forefront and surface that in a purposeful way and not just rely on the same old content moderation tools. Um, so we're targeting 8.5 for that, uh, which would be about this time next year. But there's still, it's still in the design phase. Um, so if you want to help with that, please, I'll have a slide up. With, on Friday, we're going to be talking layouts. So you can come discuss that and share your thoughts and, and hopes and dreams. Uh, other possibilities, we're getting in more more complex is the, uh, the idea of a full variant system. So with panels, uh, you have the ability to say for a given content type or a given page, uh, there are multiple variants. And it's similar to the block UI conditions. Um, so, you know, and 
if uh, I'm an admin user, I can see this. If I'm an anonymous user, I can only see this. But that has to be built at each level right now. It has to be hand-coded to be working for content types. It has to be hand-coded to be for layouts, uh, for landing pages, excuse me. But what if it was more generic and was something that we could insert at every level of Drupal um, and be able to have that sort of, if a unified UI and a unified API for allowing everything to have this sort of variant system, um, like a choose your own adventure as you go down the stack from uh, all the way from the theme level to the page level to the content level to the field level. Um, which leads me to the idea of unifying everything. Uh, <laughs> I mean, why not, right? That's the, if, if it's nice to have uh, options and flexibility and there's still the power to do anything <coughs> at all in Contrib using these APIs, but it's nice when Core sets a, a, the tone and gives Contrib a pattern to follow. Um, and it also helps the tools to be more usable. If you learn one and it looks familiar, if uh, someone implements it in a different way in a different part of, of, of Drupal, uh, that familiarity helps you, you be able to use the tool. Uh, but how do we build one system to do everything without making it awful? Because the worst thing would be if we unify everything and spread it everywhere, and it's terrible. <laughs> no one wants that. Uh, and that is a real danger. Um, we, there might be a point at which we say, you know what, we tried, but maybe we shouldn't unify everything. Maybe things need to be more bespoke or more custom, or they're best left to contrib, or even custom solutions. But I really firmly believe there are uh, tools, APIs, design patterns, things we can set forth that will help everyone do their own, uh, build their own approach to, to Drupal with layouts. Uh, and this is for anyone who's an uh, old panels person from back in the day. When we started talking about unifying things, uh, someone pointed out that we were just describing mini panels. <laughs> now, for those who don't know, mini panels, uh, well, I don't even really want to explain what mini panels is, <laughs> but mini panels was a rather flawed uh, solution to a really hard problem, uh, and it caused a lot of pain for anyone who's ever tried to use it, but it's a really good idea. It's really good, I promise. Uh, but if we did it right, and we allowed individual systems to sort of use that, we could build, use that as the building block uh, to kind of encapsulate, like this thing has a layout, which has a layout, which has a layout, which has a layout. Uh, in a way that doesn't drive you mad. Maybe. Wasn't that originally part of the whiskey initiative? So the question from the audience, there's a mic, by the way, you can start <laughs> queuing up now if you'd like, because I need some opinions and facts and whatever uh, thrown at me. But there, uh, the question was, wasn't that a part of the original whiskey initiative? So there was an initiative called the Web Services Core Context Initiative, and it promised to do about 35 things, and it got three in on its list. Uh, and I think that was th like 33 on the list, yeah. So the, the original idea of the, that initiative was to completely revamp the entire uh, rendering flow of, of Drupal from you know, the browser hitting the server all the way through the HTML being rendered. And it didn't, many parts of it did happen. And many, 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 many more did not. And about a year or so into that initiative, uh, it was decided there was too much work to be done. So it was split into two. And as you said, the, the initiative as web services and core context initiative. So they it's called, called it Whiskey. So the new, uh, the new initiative was then the single controlling object for templating and content hierarchy, <laughs> or Scotch. Uh, I don't name them, you know. Mine's just called Layout. I'm easy like that. Uh, but yeah, so the Scotch initiative was that also trying to, to solve this same problem. Uh, and that's what led to the blocks being able to be uh, placed more than once um, and have a unified block plugin system that mirrors the panes from Drupal uh, 7 panels. Um, more you know, singular uh, context-driven pieces that can uh, take information from the request and from the global environment and determine their own output. So blocks are really powerful now, and that was about the only thing Scotch did. They actually put a layout module into core, a uh, whole complete layout module except the part at the end said act to do and it returned an empty string. So it had all this code and it did nothing. Uh, so that was removed from Drupal before 8.0 shipped. Uh, so this has sort of risen from the ashes of the original Scotch and Whiskey initiatives, but there, it's not really building on any of their uh, work. We're keeping an eye on all the things they did and make sure we, don't, we do the things they did well and not repeat the mistakes they made. But uh, we built, from instead of the perfect architecture that ended up doing nothing, we built the other way, which is the worst architecture that did something, and then approving upon that iteratively. 
Um, so that's why uh, the layout API happens to be in core now. The field layout module has made it into core uh, because instead of rewriting the field UI to do everything we've ever wanted, we just let it have regions. And that was it. And that's a module now. So you know, your, your article content type can have left, right, top, bottom. Um, and using the same layouts that can drive panels and display suite. And so we're working on it in that direction from, from a work, always keep a working prototype or a working model in place so that it's usable. And that fits with the new six month release cycle if you were at the keynote trees mentioned. Uh, instead of seeing what, how much can we get done in five years? It's like how much can we get done in six months or less than six months? Because we have to also have it all reviewed and uh, uh, write test coverage and get user uh, usability testing done, accessibility testing done, security review, and then get a core committer and talk them into committing it. Uh, so it's quite a process, which is why I was saying earlier we're targeting 8.5 for some things, uh, not trying to get things into 8.4. Well, he's, so yeah, we're queuing up for questions now. So let's take the first one. Yeah. Um, so I think there's kind of two things we're dealing with. There's unstructured content and structured content. So structured content being like, uh, if it's at a page level, it might be like an event, so it has descriptors defined, and regions work really well for structured content. Um, unstructured content's a little bit harder because you come into a content type without knowing what fields you're going to need. Fields are maybe at a component level, or it could be a mix of the two. Um, field layouts and, and maybe traditional layouts where you're defining strict regions is great for structured content, but I think where that uh, at least in the past is kind of broken down as like the long form unstructured content. And that's one thing paragraphs have solved really well. You um, win. You were the first person to say paragraphs. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I know that might be uh, a no, yeah, it's con controversial word in this one, but paragraphs really, um, since it's field based and revision based, you can define a field that's maybe two column and start stacking those. And so I think panels. I'm not sure where it's at in D8, but the ability to define additional regions as you go per page, and maybe that's something I don't not be all too familiar with mini panels or whatever I was trying to solve, is yeah. how do you take something for an unstructured page? So has there been much movement there, I thought? Yes. Uh, <laughs> so the paragraphs, the paragraph solves the need, uh, a very important one. And you're right, it is about structured versus unstructured. Um, I think that the landing page builder that we're, that's being discussed is really kind of cribbing off the paragraphs <coughs> approach. And I think once we're focusing on that because there is no landing page builder right now. Uh, page manager is the least stable of the, of the panel suite right now. And it works, but um, it's, it's, you know, it does its, its thing. Um, so we're working on a core version of it basically. And that, I think that the, those patterns and that approach um, can be easily moved to address that concern as well. And then just to follow up with that, would blocks still kind of be the, the main types of component content? I'm glad you asked. I have a slide. Oh. <laughs> so blocks versus fields. They both do the same idea. You know, you have a piece of content that is uh, its own little self-contained bit. Um, and now we have fieldable blocks, which complicates it even more. Um, but why are they different? And should we make all fields into blocks? Or should we make all blocks into fields? Or should we make them into something new, uh, which would be impossible to name? Um, we've been, we, had, we had a layout sprint uh, two weeks ago, and we spent a good hour discussing possible names for them. Uh, and I won't tell you all of them, because they were mostly terrible. Uh, but yeah, no, that is a really important question, is what, uh, what is going to be our base, smallest atomic part of that, um, and how we build from that? So it's ongoing. This is why it's a conversation. Um, yes, next. So, so while it's um, certainly possible and obviously done to use something like display suite <coughs> or panels or layout to make, a, um, to make a page responsive, it also does nothing to help you nor prevent you from doing dumb things. Um, in <laughs> fact, we even saw an hour ago a video that showed left column, right column as if that was the end of it. And it's not if you're trying to do responsive and mobile. Um, have you, so I haven't seen anything in Drupal, but have you seen anything, maybe I, I've missed it, either in Drupal or, or anywhere else that really <coughs> is a good paradigm slash <coughs> interface or whatever to keep people able to remove something to the left mod 
who the left column, but also explain to them what that means when they come over all of that. Yes. Um, yeah, the, the Drupal is built by developers, and it's built for developers who are too lazy to be developers anymore, who want to be site builders. Um, and when, when, when developers start making decisions about things like responsive uh, layouts, you, they do it generally wrong. And they, they think that I can top down design this page to do this wonderful thing when you squish it this way. But from what I've been very sternly informed by front end people is that content should drive where the breakpoints fall. Um, so the more, uh, the ability to have a layout for a specific page and define those, those as the either the content editor in conjunction with the front end developer or front end designer, um, they have to work on the responsive part. This isn't going to solve that for you. Um, we can't. We can't even prevent you from shooting yourself in the foot, really. Um, if we did, we'd make the system inflexible and paternalistic, and I don't think that's something we really want. Um, but there, the, the beauty of the layouts API is it doesn't produce anything. Uh, it, it is a way to discover layouts and then load them and then build something with them. Right now, it's a render array. Um, but there's already someone working on a thing where they can consume the layouts defined by the content editor and pass them through as just the, the definition of the layout to through JSON and then let everyone else figure it out from there um, and do it sort of that way and build other tools around the APIs provided. Um, so just because Panels does one thing, it's not the end of the, end of the day. There's still going to be other contrib solutions um, improving upon this and making more specific things for example, unstructured content um, and uh, very complex needs on, res on a responsive site. So, Damien. Hey, um, I just wanted to clear the air given it already came up. Speaking as the penalizer maintainer for D7, I'd like to say a lot of sites should have used paragraphs instead of penalizer. <laughs> and at the same time, I've seen a lot of sites use paragraphs way more than it should have been. So please don't consider that, or please don't think there's any animosity between the maintainers or any or the users of these two modules and ecosystems. They're just approaching the problem of how do content staff get their stuff out to the world yeah. and everybody has different use cases. So please don't think there's any animosity between the two maintainers and groups and Yes? <laughs> well said. Thank you, Damien. Um, all right, so I have a couple more slides, but we can continue the conversation. So please continue to line up if you have something to say. I want to talk, so those are the things we could do and might do and need to think more about. But here's what we have already decided we will do. Uh, the main thing, I don't really know how best to explain this, but per entity overrides. Uh, if all nodes have a two column layout, but node five has a three column layout. Um, the ability to say for a single piece of content, this can now differ from the rest of the system around it. Um, that needs, that is a killer feature. Um, and everyone has always said that to me. I said, Tim, why don't we have that? I said, well, we haven't started yet. Well, now we're starting. Uh, the goal is to put that, and we've been calling it Panelizer Lite, uh, into core. Um, and that is the main, my main focus going forward. Um, for the next killer feature of, of the layout initiative to go into core. Um, yay. <laughs> so if you'd like to, if you'd yeah, like, how that, how you do it. Peter, there's a mic. <laughs> no, uh, the question was how, how, do we know how to do it? And sort of, we have ideas. Um, honestly, a lot of the original field layout stuff that just went in um, was, was copy pasted from Display Suite. Um, and a lot of this is going to be copy pasted from Panelizer, um, but with we, you know we need to make sure we thought through the data model and um, make write actual uh, you know behavioral tests for it first up front and make sure it fits the, the you know the interaction patterns we actually want and not just copy pasting things because they worked well in Drupal seven. Um, so can I ask one real quick question? Yes, you can. All right. Short enough that I can repeat it. Yes. Okay. Um, are you going to identify the nodes, to, the entities to override with UUIDs or machine names? So the question, the question was, are you going to use UUIDs or machine names to identify content? The tricky part is content entities do not have machine names. 
Um, so the idea would uh, is to use UIDs and not the serial IDs so that it could be uh, deployable. Yeah, is anyone storing, you know, references to other pieces of content using serial IDs, that's a bug. You should file a bug report because it should all be using UIDs um, so that you can actually deploy things properly. Yes? So my, my question is for those of us who jumped in early and were already using panels or display suite or yes. paragraphs or whatever, um, how are we Yes. The same thing. Yes. So the first thing was that the since the layout API went into core and all of the contributed modules uh, adapted to it, there's already migration paths for panels to panel, like panels two to panels three or whatever the panels eight x three x to panels eight x four x, for example. Um, but there is a, since there's no solution built yet, there is no way to know what the migration path will be like. Uh, it really depends on how uh, how one-to-one -one things are. Um, the good news is that none of these modules in core are going to be required in any way. Um, and panels, they've already, you know, they're planning to continue working on panels throughout this process. So there's no need to, uh, it's not just like I'm going to finish my work and then panels are going to disappear. Like that's not the, the plan. Mostly because, as I said, we've been iterating so, so quickly and so, but in uh, specific chunks, that there is a, a vast majority of uh, the functionality is going to remain in contrib for the foreseeable future. Um, and there are already things that we know that Panelizer does that we have no real plans to put into core. Um, so it's honestly, it's mostly going to be a, a decision of is what core provides enough for me? And then we'll, then there can be a migration path. But if there's functionality that doesn't exist in core that you need, then you cannot migrate and you'll have to continue using the contributed modules. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, look at this. I'm envisioning a tab on a node that gives me the field UI for that sort of node. Um, just because I'm thinking, why would I have a UI do this? It's totally different from how I'm sort of making the default one for all the nodes. Um, just so that that exists in, in Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, maybe right now. Uh, so in Drupal 7, that was the only way to do things. Uh, you would be dropped into a field UI like. Uh, inter interface wherein you could control it just for that specific piece of content. Mm -hmm. um, and then years later, the in-place editor panels IPE was written so that you could do it in line on the front end, which was great. And then, amusingly enough, when Drupal 8, they wrote the IPE part first, and you couldn't do it on the back end. Um, but that is, you know, being worked on. So there would be no uh, plans to, uh, there, there always needs to be a full 100% functionality admin version of it. And there's not, we're not sure if the, the front end version will just have the 80% use case or a full featured version. It'll likely be using the settings tray module, which was new in Drupal 8.2, um, as sort of like the next generation of the IPE. But no, the, the UI should, yeah, the, the UI should, for setting up the defaults should be very, very familiar, if not identical, to the one controlling the overrides. Right. Okay. Um, and then you, may, you just made a comment about using UIDs. Referencing the, the core entity reference field uses serial IDs. So. That's a bug. There's an issue for it. But that's not my module, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I want, someone mentioned earlier, uh, it was a question about responsiveness. Um, there is a breakpoint module in core that does a couple things, um, and it should integrate with more and more of this as we uh, progress. But I'm going to, as of right now, consider that their problem, and they can talk to me about it as opposed to uh, we're not going to work on full breakpoint. Uh, integration in core in the first couple versions, mostly because it really needs to be left to the the the, the site specific theme. Um, yes. You mentioned um, with the new field layout module the concept of like sub regions, and uh, one thing in the last couple of years of learning Drupal, it's been a bit of a, a real learning curve for me is is how challenging it can be to have like mobile content blocks. So you have this main content block, and uh, but yet the design might call for like, you know, some form of slices, or yeah. uh, and it's been a challenge. There's you know a half a dozen or more possible solutions for that, but they all seem like a lot of work for something that could be seems like it could be kind of simple to have like yes. content blocks. And I I wasn't sure. 
story of some of these ideas are kind of like attacking that, or is that kind of a side? Yes, um, I didn't really include a slide because it's you explained it very well, um, but it's kind of a it's a it's an afterthought to most people when they're thinking about the functionality, but it actually is very important. Uh, yeah, so right now you get a single from the block UI, you can control the single main content block. It's almost always in your main content region, and then that loads whatever the field UI has you've configured, and that's it. You don't get to sort of chop things up at that level. Uh, but now we have the ability because blocks are so powerful. Um, instead of just saying, oh, here's your, uh, here's your one UI that shows the content, and then you have to go elsewhere to slice it up, and you can't intersperse other non-content-based uh, components. Um, we have that ability. You've always had that ability in panels in D7, um, and it's been tricky to do, and it is brittle, um, because as you add new fields, you have to, it has to decide to put them somewhere, and it might put them not where you expect. Um, the biggest issue there is that panels and all those were working from the contrib side. So they had to kind of patch over and alter the front core functionality. We have the, the privilege of being core. So we can just change how things work internally. And you're no longer having, spending that extra steps going around the core system to make it do what you want. Uh, as, as a core module, we can just change core. Um, so it, it'll allow us to do a lot more things to make it more seamless and not seem tacked on. Um, that's my goal. Yes. I wanted to ask about a few areas that weren't really discussed. One is um, having to do with views. Um, so there have been attempts to have like um, use displays, quick tabs, for example. Yeah. Quick tabs being its own sort of way out um, area. And also uh, maybe ideas about um, using views attachments and being able to put views attachments um, in some sort of layout system, rather than sort of having to create those blocks and then place them um, using something like the analyzer. Um, and then <coughs> lastly, what, what are plans about um, being able to, like, the great thing about panels or mini panels, I, I like mini panels, um, <laughs> is being able to um, add contextual filters and things like that. Um, are there plans <coughs> for those types of um, functionality? I'm going to take the last question first. Uh, no, no one really thought about that yet. Um, but the contextual filters, that's really interesting. Um, I don't think we should, we will make it harder to do. I don't know that we're going to tackle it right away. Um, but that, I'm going to make a mental note to, to look into that. The first part about views, I laughed because my introduction to core was working on the views and Drupal core initiative. Um, so views is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I can't hear you, Peter, sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, so, the ability to slice up a view, so panels, uh, or sorry, C tools, which is the underlying code powering panels and everything, uh, and views itself, uh, provides the ability to sort of slice and dice up your view and say, oh, this part should be this one thing, this thing should be this other, and you can then use panels to recombine it in interesting ways. Or you can use uh, views blocks, or you can use views attachments and kind of fake it yourself. Um, and going back to what I just said, like now, those are all different systems that evolved differently over the course of 10 years. Um, some of which had the same authors, some of which didn't. Um, but they each kind of had to uh, both be aware of, uh, like views and C-tools and panels had to know about each other, but they also had to assume they didn't all exist at once. And the more we put into core, uh, the more we, core can collaborate with itself because it's all, it's all one package. Um, so I think there are a lot of improvements uh, specifically around views that need to be done. Uh, once we have a landing page builder, uh, instead of going to the views UI and then creating a, land a page view, um, it should be a block or pane or whatever we're going to call it, and that should integ integrate into the landing page builder UI. Um, so that, you know, you, you go to landing page builder UI, you want a view, you can create a view right there and drop it in. It shouldn't be two steps and have to go do the, the hard part first and then come back to the part you actually care about. You should be able to start with your intention and w work all the way through that flow. Um, and I think that's, I'm really excited about that, that possibility of uh, with menus and views and search and all these things that you would usually use another tool to then lay out later, uh, to lay it out initially with purpose um, from the, the UI that has been designed for you. Um, so I'm really, yeah, that's, that's a huge possibility. And, um, but that just, you know, at this point, we just need more people. Uh, there are two of us that are funded uh, to, to work on this. 
and then everyone else uh, you know, chips in when they can, but most of the other people interested are also maintaining the Drupal contrib versions of panels and display suite and whatnot. So the more people, the better. Yes? Yeah, so with blocks being kind of in a global space um, and being able to be shared across, you know, multiple pieces of content and reuse, which is obviously one of the great pieces of blocks, but the thing that becomes kind of tough is uh, version control, or revisioning, I should say. Yes. And potentially, I don't know if it would be something with multi-version or, uh, you know, sharing content, how do you kind of control that like, without having a host? Has there been any headway there? Is there, uh, is that something that's still being worked on? Yes and no. So the, the idea with, if we do it, a lot, the panelizer model, um, you do have a controlling host, which is the, the, the piece of content itself. Um, and that is revisionable. Or if we don't do it wrong, it will be revisionable. revisionable. Um, with, with configuration like uh, a view, a view isn't revisionable in, in the sense that you're thinking of. I mean, it's configuration so you can dump it to uh, version control and use Git to manage revisions. But it's not the same kind of tracking. There's no workflow po potential there. Um, so the original, pa the problem with page manager right now is that it is config and it's therefore not revisionable. With the layout, new layout builder proposal, um, the, there's still, it's got to be stored somewhere. So there's going to be a controlling entity, like a host of some sort that we can store it in. It's just a question of where, where you can draw the line. Say, oh no, this is this little box. I want this to be revisioned by itself, and that other thing shouldn't know about it. Mm -hmm. uh, that gets back to the, the, the mini panels everywhere, or the, like, how do we um, propagate it down or back up, or you know, it's all up in the air. Uh, but because Damien, who was up here earlier with the bunny ears, uh, cares very, very strongly about revisions and keeps us honest and makes sure that we don't forget about it. Um, so that's going to be baked in at a very low level, especially with the workflow initiative. Yeah, um, I think with all the work on content moderation. Right. Stuff, we can't really problem. ignore it now. Uh, we are forced to deal with it. So. Cool. Thank you. It's good. Yeah. Other questions? Thoughts? Considerations? Uh, so, I just have a, a, yeah. a thought. Uh, kill me. Yes. Do you want, oh, I'll do the thing. I'll do the thing. Sorry. Excuse me. It's for everyone else. It's on YouTube, you know, and in 20 minutes it'll be on YouTube or whatever. Uh, normally, a little things will follow or something. Um, uh, yeah, just consideration. I think there's a fundamental difference, and it needs to be exposed in the UI when you're revisioning a landing page or a complicated panel. When you say rollback, do you mean just the layout, yes. I mean, I want to see the content I saw in here before, and you can't, there's there's no way to do it other than giving that choice, because the same person in the same situation can say, now I want to roll back to the previous configuration, and now I want to roll back to the previous content, and if you don't give them both choices in that, you know, in a reasonable UI, it's never, it's never going to always be right. Agreed. Okay. And honestly, yeah, even if we solve the data model and make it all really make sense to the person pushing the buttons to like actually do the workflows, if the UI doesn't make sense, it's pointless. Um, if you don't know what you're actually doing, and that was one of the big failings of the Views UI, or the original or the 2x version of Views, is that you could easily destroy the, the underlying data because you didn't know what revert meant in that context. Um, and it's really, really tricky. Uh, and it it's impossible that you can't just put more help text because no one reads it um, <laughs> ever, ever. Uh, but you need to, the, uh, there's no way to say, oh, this is, you know, you don't want to surprise the user. Uh, it's like principle of least astonishment. Or you don't want it to be con uh, like them to be taken aback. But what does that mean? Like, how do we know what they expect? And that just comes down to user testing um, and making the best choice that we can and then, you know, 30% of everyone will be still angry because we didn't pick their approach or whatever. Uh, and, and the rest is just training and tutorials and, and practice and trial and error. And hopefully not doing it on production, you know. Like, um, but yeah, there needs to be flexibility there. Uh, but thankfully, it's because the, the workflow initiative is happening, like they're, they're tackling this problem for uh, referenced entities on content. And once they kind of, well, continue to solve that or set the path forward with that, uh, we can easily just steal their brilliant ideas and pass them off as our own. Um, so, so uh, I know you touched on this a little bit earlier, but 
the thing that drives me crazy most of all is the difference between you know the new regions and the blocks. Yes. And then the uh, like the new field layout and what used to be like panelizer only affecting the content uh, regions. So do you have any thoughts on how likely it is that those will be integrated and, and usable as a unit? Um, yes. Yeah, so the first thing is that we have to make them all use the same API. Um, we, you know, we can't, and then we have to talk, come to the, the hurdle of even if we want to do that, uh, and if we do, can it be configurable? Because I know, for example, uh, at a, the, my previous employer I worked, uh, they, they use the distinction between Panelizer and Display Suite to sort of lock things down. So Display Suite was used only by the site builder or the themer to control things that were, you know, passed down from on high and could never change. And things using Panelizer, because of IPE, uh, was the, were the parts that the content editors could then manipulate. And it was actually really, really nice to have that like hard fence around your area and say, the, I'm in the control of this part and something else is in control of the next part. Um, but forcing that on someone who doesn't have that complex need is, is a burden, a UX burden, like a, a cognitive burden. Um, so being able to tear down those walls and say, I have one system to manage everything um, would be very powerful, uh, but very dangerous also. So it's it is a, an eternal push-pull there. Um, but we don't, you don't have the possibility to do that, so I think we're going to try to make it possible and then decide if we want to tell people about it. <laughs> um, and I am more focused on the API side, and uh, so I'm going to make that Emily's problem to decide uh, you know, what, after I do the thing, should we actually release it or should I just delete it and pretend it never happened? Uh, <laughs> so, before, we can keep uh, going with discussion. This is great and I really appreciate uh, all the input. I just want to put up this slide. Um, there is an issue tag in on Drupal issue queues. It's blocks hyphen layouts. There is a plan issue. I'm going to post these slides to the DrupalCon site uh, in the next 20 minutes, but that is the issue ID, 281175. I uh, got lucky with the 111 right in the middle. It makes it easier to remember. Uh, there's an IRC channel and there's a Slack channel. Uh, and that's my Twitter handle, Tim Plunkett. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the, has everyone done taking pictures of it? Okay. So the contribution sprints are this Friday. Um, I will be there. I will be wearing a red Phillies hat and you will be able to find me. Um, do not find my imposter. There's someone else here who bought a Phillies hat to confuse people. Uh, <laughs> I should have picked a more specific brand than just the Philadelphia Phillies. But what can I say? I love my city. Uh, but yeah, the, the first time Sprinter Workshop, if you don't uh, have never participated in a Sprint before, they'll help you get set up with uh, you know, your local environment and give you the, the skills to be able to actually participate. Uh, the Mentored Core Sprint is where if you, want to, if you don't really uh, care about layouts at all, you could go to that. And they'll help you get involved with Drupal and learn the process uh, around contributing. The general sprints are where uh, all the topic specific ones will be and that's where the layout stuff will be happening. And I would love to uh, not code and talk to people instead. Uh, I can write code anytime, but the sharing ideas and, and concerns and find out what's actually important to people is, is really key at this stage of the initiative. Um, so I'd really appreciate it if you could come by on Friday and discuss. All right. That's it for, for me. We can continue to talk. I think we have about five minutes, um, or you can get early to your next session. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. I think this has become an area that I'm going to be more involved in. Great. Uh, I'm working with Pfizer. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're doing the way proof of concept and right now I've got a unique I'm trying to figure out how to put it all together. I've got a blue module that puts paragraphs and analyzer together. So that, may, that may become a need to know well, if we decide to put it. Yeah, you're allowed to. Oh I am. I'm just trying to decide if that's the solution I want. What it does is it adds it it, it turns each paragraph delta into a block that you can then place on paragraphs. Right. Well, it gives you an admin title so that it's unstructured content.